everyone. Today we are looking at chemical monitoring and management and in this topic we will look at the mon monitoring the Haber process. So in this topic we will look at why the Haber process was important and also the history behind it and the significance of this process. So why is this process still important to the humankind today? During the 1900s, Germany was facing two major problems. The first one was natural supplies from guano deposits in Chile were dwindling. So Germany was highly dependent on overseas supplies for um, its production of ammonia, fertilizers and explosives. So this was one of the major problems. The second problem was the increase in world population and the need for food necessitated, necessitated intensive farming. So to um, provide food to the large population of the world, a lot more fertilizer was required to produce more crops, to provide more food. And hence, these were the two major problems facing Germany in the 1900s. And what was the solution to this problem? The solution to this problem was that the production of ammonia, which can be oxidized to a nitric acid. And as we will see in the following uh, slide, a scientist called Heber actually developed the process by which ammonia can be generated. And we will also look at why this was beneficial to Germany. Ammonia and nitric acid could also be converted into nitro uh, nitrogenous salts. Now Fritz Haber and the Haber process. So Fritz Haber was the scientist who developed the Haber process. So he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1919 for his work on fixing nitrogen from air. This process that he used to uh, fix nitrogen was called the Haber process. He reacted nitrogen with hydrogen using an iron catalyst to form ammonia. And ammonia was the main product that was then used to form fertilizers and explosives. So by 1910, Haber and another scientist, Carl Bosch, who was also a chemical engineer, were able to manufacture large amounts of ammonia using an iron-based catalyst. So they were um, uh, able to produce enough ammonia so that could be used by consumers and also that made it economically viable. By 1913, they could produce 30 tons of ammonia um, per day. So this was definitely economically viable as large amounts of ammonia could be produced in a single day. So what does the Haber process involve? The Haber process involves the reaction between nitrogen, which is distilled from air, and hydrogen derived from the fossil fuels. So these two elements join together to produce ammonia, which is the raw material for many other important chemicals. So ammonia is a raw material and this would be further used to produce other important chemicals to be used. So what is the significance of Fritz Haber work? The synthesis of ammonia using the Haber process facilitated the manufacture of fertilizers, for continued food production. So we already looked at one of the problems that was the increasing population of the world. But the process or uh, the development of ammonia actually helped to overcome that problem because more fertilizers could be produced for continued food production. Nitric acid, which, is an essence, which was essential in the production of explosives and other ammunition. At that time, Germany was going through a war and hence the production of nitric acid by ammonia was also very important as it allowed the production of explosives and other ammunition. So much of the fertilizer originated in Chile, as we already know, and that was a long way away from the industrial centers of Europe. Due to Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch's work, Germany was now able to produce ammonia in a large scale. So because of them, Germany did not uh, need to bring ammonia from Chile. They could directly produce in their own land, which means they could save more costs. And also they had um, direct uh, production of ammonia. Hence, they uh, could produce ammonia on a large scale, which means again they could produce a lot of fertilizers in a, ch um, uh, in a very cheap way, as well as a lot of explosives. So Germany used the process to make explosives in World War I after British cut off supplies of nit nitrate from Chile. So the Britain, Britain initially cut off the supplies for nitrates so that Germany was not being so that Germany was not that strong in the war. 
but Germany already developed a way to produce ammonia and hence that was not a problem because they could produce am uh, ammonia in their own land and hence they could also produce explosives in their own land and this lengthened the war. So what was the more significant about food saver work? The direct fixation of nitrogen enabled great increases in global food uh, production which again helped to overcome the large increasing population. Nitrogenous fertilizers are essential for agriculture as it allows production of massive quantities of food. Development of haver process has been immense value to humankind because again we already know that the population of the world is increasing at a constant rate. Hence more food needs to be produced and more fertilizers is required and therefore the haver process is definitely significant and it represents a very significant addition to the earth's natural processes of nitrogen fixation. This brings us to the end of the theory session. Now let's look at some of the questions to test your knowledge. Question 1. The Haber process for producing ammonia was developed early in the 20th century. What was the major advantage of its development? So let's look at the first option. The government sold the process to other governments. Now this is not actually a, a um, benefit for the society itself but only the government so A cannot be the answer. Let's look at option B. The inventor sold the process for a great deal of money. That could be true but again the question is asking what was the major advantage of this development. So how did this development help the society not the inventor only. So this is not the answer as well. Let's look at option D. It provided jobs for many who were unemployed. Again, this could be true, but this does not directly relate to the uh, question, which was what is the major advantage of its development? So how did it help the society? What did it allow the society to do? So therefore, the answer is definitely C. Let's look at why. It provided a source for uh, of nitrogen for farming and industry, and this is true because, as you would know, before Germany could produce uh, ammonia on its own, most of its supply was from Chile and that actually um, caused them uh, to spend a lot of money to bring ammonia from Chile. There was transportation cost plus the cost of buying ammonia itself. Hence C is correct because the production of ammonia allowed the production of fertilizers for example which was beneficial for farming. Hence C is the correct answer. Let's move on to question two. Question two asks us, which is the most current statement about Fritz Haber? So let's look at option A. A tells us Haber developed techniques to make ammonia on a large scale. Now Haber did not develop the techniques to produce ammonia on a large scale. Carl Bosch did. So A is not the answer. Let's look at B. Haber invented the high pressure equipment needed for the industrial production of ammonia. Now Haber himself done, did not develop the high pressure equipment. He looked, he actually developed the reaction to produce ammonia but not the equipment involved. So B is not the answer again. What about option D? D tells us Haber's main contribution to chemistry was the explosives he developed when he blew up his factory. Now this is completely wrong because his, uh, for, um, his production of ammonia was not only to develop explosives but also develop fertilizer and he also did not blow up his factory. So D is definitely wrong. Hence our answer is C. Why? Because C tells us Haber first reacted nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia and found a suitable catalyst. That is true. Haber was the first person in history who reacted nitrogen and hydrogen together to form ammonia and he also found out that an iron catalyst could be used which could speed up the process. Hence D C is the correct answer. Let's move on to question 3. 3 tells us before the Haber process was developed what was the main source of nitrogen compounds for making fertilizer and explosives? So the first option, ammonia was extracted from air. Now this, this is definitely wrong because ammonia does not exist as a molecule in the air. 
it, um, nitrogen and hydrogen exist as molecules, you have to combine nitrogen and hydrogen together to form ammonia. So ammonia does not occur naturally. So option A is definitely wrong. What about B? Ammonia was made from gases in the air. So this is partly true because it is made from gases in the air which are nitrogen and hydrogen. But again, Haber was the person who developed it. And the question asks before the Haber process was developed. But this was after the Haber process was developed. So B is wrong again. Let's look at C. C tells us deposits of sodium carbonate were transported from Germany to Chile and England. Now, sodium carbonate is not a source of nitrogen compounds because it does not contain any nitrogen. As you can see, it only contains sodium and carbonates. Hence, C is definitely not the right answer. Therefore, our answer is D. D tells us deposits of sodium nitrate were transported from Chile to Germany and Britain. And this is true because sodium nitrate, as you can see, the nitrogen molecule is present. And therefore, it can be used to form nitrogen compounds. And also, we have looked at the history before in our theory, and we learned that the, um, Germany was highly dependent on overseas supplies, which is from Chile, and they bought um, nitrogen compounds from Chile. And therefore, D is the correct answer. So before Haver developed the process of um, manufacturing ammonia, Germany was highly dependent on Chile for its natural supplies. Now let's move on to question four. Question four tells us to list the conditions used by Haber and Bosch to allow the production of commercial quantities of ammonia. So the first one is, the first, of the con first condition is nitrogen and hydrogen is used in the ratio of one is to three. So one molecule of nitrogen is used to react with three molecules of hydrogen to form ammonia. The second one is the pressure used is 250 to 350 atmospheric pressure. About 450 degrees Celsius of temperature is used, and catalyst of finely divided iron or iron oxide is used. So these are the main conditions that is needed to be monitored during the manufacture of ammonia. And also, ammonia liquefied and removed as it is formed. We already know that um, the formation of ammonia, the reaction is equilibrium. So if you continually remove the amount of product formed, the equilibrium will always move forward to produce more products. So these are the five um, things you need to monitor while uh, producing uh, ammonia to make sure that the yield of ammonia is um, up to industrial um, level. Let's move on to question five. Question five tells us, what effect did the development of the industrial production of ammonia by Haver and Bosch have on the course of the war? So the development of the industrial production of ammonia allowed Germany to continue to manufacture ammonia, again, which led to the continued production of explosives, even when the supplies from Chile were cut off. So when Britain cut off the supplies from Chile, Germany did not fall back in the war. They continued to pro produce explosives, and this again prolonged the war. So the war did not stop. It continued. And also, England and its allies still had to get nitrates from Chile, and this was difficult and expensive. So therefore, Ger Germany had a benefit because it could produce its own ammonia, but England couldn't. So again, this prolonged the war, and it did not stop Germany in World War I. This brings us to the end of the question session. In this um, uh, topic, we looked at the Haber process. What is the Haber process and also why it was uh, significant in the history and why it's still important today to humankind.